we all been there. We need to make that one head out of three flips, say, and yet we managed to mess it up. Fortunately, we have a new card here to help us. So let's take a look at how Glimbo Tango can help us improve our odds of winning, shall we? Hello and welcome for another episode of Pokemath. This time we're up for episode 8 where we're going to look at how Glimbo Tangle can help you win games. And in order to help me here today, I'm going to be getting some help from my buddy Maractus. And uh, well, without further ado, let's get into what this stadium can do for us. And the big question we're going to be answering today is just how much does this Glimbo Tangle actually help you? Well, for today's example, I'm going to be using a deck and we're going to be doing something a little untraditional for Pokemath in the sense that I'm actually going to be showing you a deck list, commenting on a deck list, and actually play a couple of games with you here at the end of this video. But before we get that far, let's look at one of the key cards here today. And let's look at Maractus. Well, Maractus doesn't look like much, but what really makes it stand out is this powerful needles attack which is flip a coin for each energy attached to this Pokemon, and this attack does 60 per heads, right? So that's interesting on its own. However, not that good, say, but fortunately we got a new card, say Glimwood Tangle here, which can actually help us achieve, say, a more reliant or, yeah, reliant, yeah, damage output. And basically what it does, it lets us reflip one time. So suppose we don't manage to hit the target number that we acquire, we at least get one more chance. And the whole point of today's episode is that we're going to look at, well, how much is that an improvement of the current status? Well, let's look at a list. And without further ado, I'm going to go into uh, PGO and then we'll be right back. Hey guys, now we're over in PGO, let's take a look at today's list I'm going to be playing. Well, there's nothing you haven't seen before, I would say, but I did try to take my own little spin on this. In the sense that you might have watched Andrew Mahone making a really good video about this. I'll highly recommend watching that as well, if you haven't watched it already. And uh, well, without further ado, I'm going to explain some of the card choices here. So we're going to be playing Maractus, as we saw here from earlier. We're going to be using powerful needles to really do some serious damage here. So of course, no argument against playing four of that. We're going to play it together with Porygon C, which makes us able to bypass the normal rule of just attaching one energy per turn. And in this case, we can attach as many as we want. This, of course, gives a high focus on the energy count of this deck here, as we're going to see down here, with a high amount of special energies. And um, I try to take just a few small twists and turns from the list that we saw online, because I noticed one thing. Everybody who covered this deck, they covered the same list. So they didn't want to take any uh, alteration. So you know what? I'm going to do a little different and alter a little bit. So small alteration number one. I took out one of the basic energies and added an additional, say in this case, a draw energy. Why a draw energy? I like it. I think it adds consistency. And you know what? We already play four of each of other good energies. But if you have other good energy suggestions out there, let me know. The second alteration I made was that I cut one of the Marnies and added Erica's Hospitality. Actually, this is just trying out one. I might even go higher on that later because I still think this is one of the most underrated cards in the format, especially when you have Eternatus playing around with a bench of up to eight. You can draw a lot of cards with this supporter here. So that's my alteration number two. Finally, I made another alteration where I took and added one of the Marsh Shadow and I took out one of the bosses in order to accomplish that. Because, well, two bosses sort of should be sufficient here given that we play Eldegrass GX. But why did I add Marsh Shadow? Well, since we have a situation where we need to get the Stadium card in play in order to alter the probabilities in our favor, then if your opponent would play down Chaotic Swell, then you would essentially lose one of your Stadiums directly just to be able to discard it. Therefore, since we play a lot of capture energies, I thought it would be a really good idea to play Marsh Shadow because you can literally just find another capture energy, use the ability, and then we're free to play down our Glimwood Tangle in order to, you know, help our game plan. For the rest of the list, there's nothing much else. We play one Crobat for draw, one Dedenny for draw, then we can play both in the same turn, suppose. 
we have to. Session is, or session, whatever you want to call it, is very good in the beginning, especially when we play four capture energies. There's a high chance probability of getting that into play. We could also look into that in another episode. And of course, we play, like I said already, Elder Grass, which is essentially just a extra supporter at any given moment. For research, I went down to Free Marnies. We have some search cards here. And without saying too much else, that's the list I'm going to be playing through a couple of games here later in this episode. So, hope you like the way of doing this. Let's return to the episode. And welcome back. I hope you like this view of the deck list. And now, when we now have this, uh, have this view behind us, we can actually look into what are the likelihood of hitting you know, certain numbers. So first, before we dive into the really interesting part, this is relevant, still interesting, but not the core. Let me put it like this. What is the probability of hitting an exact number, but first without Glimwood Tangle? So let's see what's the status before we introduce the Stadium card. Suppose you have the following scenario. It has two energies attached, one Aur Aurora energy to account for the grass, and then just one capture energy just to account for a Colossus energy. So we get to flip twice. Well, in this kind of scenario, you have four possible outcomes. You can either have two heads, one head and one tail, one tail, one head, and two tails, in exactly that order, at least for the heads tails part, right? So now we can look at each of the different outcomes. Suppose you think, hmm, what is the chance of hitting actually zero damage? That is the same as saying, what is the probability of two tails? Since that covers one of the four possible outcomes, the chance is one over four, which accounts for 25%. Likewise, likewise, we can look at 60 damage, which is the same as taking the sum of two possible outcomes, namely the probability of flipping first a heads, then a tails, plus the probability of first flipping a tails and then a head, which is two quarters put together, which gives a half, i.e. 50%. And likewise, we can also look at the probability of actually hitting 120 then you have a nice distribution of possible damage output here. And this, of course, we can generalize. So I made this table here, which shows up until six energies. That means that here we see what is the probability of hitting a certain number given X amount of energies attached to <coughs> Maractus. So first we looked at, say, with two energies attached, we see here that the most of the probability mass say, so what is the most likely outcome, lays at 50% for hitting 60. We can then just take it one step down, say now we have three energy attached. And now you can see that it's equally likely to hit 60 damage as to hit 120 damage. And we can take this a step further, that of course with four energies, now the most likely outcome of single outcome is to hit 120 damage and so forth that we move slowly to higher and higher damage, the more energy we attach. But also what you would notice now is that the mass or the probability also becomes lower and lower for each individual number because we're splitting over more numbers. But this is just to show without the stadium card what the effect is of adding each and extra energy to Maractus. And of course, these are average outcomes. So let's take this one step further. And now look at actually the really interesting part here. Suppose we want to look at the probability of hitting at least X amount of damage. This can be translated into saying, well, what is the probability of achieving this given knockout that we really need? Suppose you really need to hit 120 to take this knockout or 180 or 200, which requires 240, right? And so on. Like, how can we do it? Well, let's take another example. Suppose now we have three energy attached. Still the Aurora energy, but instead of just a capture, we have a twin. So now we have a total of three energies to use for powerful needles, i.e. we get three flips. And now suppose we want to hit at least 60 damage. This corresponds to we need just one hit out of the possible three flips. Well, what's the probability of that? Let's take it like this. It's actually the same as saying What's the sum of hitting, well, probability sum of hitting exactly 60, 120, 180. So we can actually take these three individual probabilities and just add them together. I put a little math on the screen here. Don't be too scared. What it essentially says is the probability of X being at least 60 or above is the same as probability hitting 60 plus 120 plus 180. And then we can just replace that with the probability we just calculated in the earlier table, right? And we sum them all up. 
And we see that with three flips, hitting at least just one is the same as saying we have a probability of 87.5%. Well, seven eighths, basically. We could also just have flipped it the other way around and said, what is the probability of not hitting it? Which is just one minus the probability of being below 60, which is just one minus 12 and a half, and we get exactly the same answer. It doesn't matter which way we did it. So by using this line of argumentation, then we can, of course, again, generalize this to a bigger table this way. And now you can see here, we have now acquired all the probabilities here of, say, hitting at least 60, at least 120, at least 180, and so forth. You also, of course, have a column here for zeros. Let's clean that one up because we don't really need it in the sense that, well, the probability of hitting at least zero is 100%. You always hit at least zero damage. And this here would nicely generalize this scenario here. However, let's see what Glimwood Tango actually does for us, shall we? Suppose again, we now want to hit at least X amount of damage. And now we're going to take a look at, well, how much does this stadium car improve our chances of achieving exactly that? And look here, we will have the following strategy. We flip, suppose we don't hit enough, then we use the stadium, simple strategy, right? So if we flip, we don't hit it the first time. Well, we try again. That should be the to go to strategy for everybody playing this card, but I just want to get that out there. But the thing is, how do we actually come about that? How do we calculate it? Well, let's look at it. It's the same as saying the following. Suppose now we have the probability of succeed in first try. This really good English, don't care. Then it's the same as saying that plus the probability of failing the first time multiplied by probability of succeed in the second try. This should just have been success, but you know what? That happens. And now let's try to change this into actual numbers so we can calculate it, right? Because look at here. Let's look at the table from before. Don't worry, guys. This is just a table that we had right before, and I just highlighted the 75% chance of hitting, say, at least 60 with two coin flips. So don't worry. Now we're going to use this from information in order to introduce the effect of the stadium card. So look at it like this. We're going to do the following. First, going to make a little more space. Back with our friend Aractus, still highlighting this. And now let's translate this to succeed in first try plus probability of fail in first try multiply succeed in the second try, which just corresponds to taking, say, we already have the 75% the first try. That's the probability that we actually succeed in the first try and thereby hit the required amount of damage. Oh, that's great. Now, then we plus that with the other potential outcome, which is we fail the first time around. That's one minus 75, which of course, 25% chance that we do fail the first time around. And then we multiply that with, if we would succeed the second time, which is of course, 75% of that. All this taken together gives us now a success rate of 93.75%. I've represented everything here in decimals, so you have to multiply by 100 to get into percentages, but I hope you can do that. And of course, we can see here that we have a gain of 18.75% in this particular scenario. We can of course also, this formula can also be shortened a little bit, so we can reduce it to one minus the probability of success squared. And this is just the way I should have written the first time. But it's easier for me to show you the full version first and then compress it. And of course, this will have given the exact same answer. So one minus 0 0.75 squared. Okay, very well. This is shown for this here. Now we can actually take this all together and compare each of the improvements for each given scenario. So now I'm going to look at these combined tables. This is the first table and the second table. So basically with with the stadium and without the stadium. Without the stadium is the one on top and with the stadium is the one below. And now I'm gonna introduce a third little table to help us out. That table actually just shows us the difference between each of the corresponding cells. So now suppose that we have two energy attached. We wanna do at least 60 damage. Without the stadium, we see it is 75% chance of happening. We see that with the stadium, it is 93.75. We just calculated that. And over here, we can see the corresponding improvement of that scenario, which is 18.75. And now I've expanded the table all the way to 360, because then you would take 
quote unquote all relevant knockouts. Of course, when you play this deck, you often see a scenario where you can have even more energy attached, as we're going to see in the game playthrough in just a minute. So without further ado, let's jump into a couple of games, shall we? Hey guys, welcome back to PGO, and uh, without further ado, let's get into finding an opponent that can go sit on a cactus. See if uh, how this is going to go. Haven't played much at all in PGO, I must admit, so this is also going to be a lot of fun. I'm not a fan of sitting and retaking, retaking until I show you a perfect streak. Because, uh, let's face it, that can take a while. So I'm just going to see how this deck plays out and how lucky we are in coin flips. Because remember why we're here? We're just here to see, well, how well are it going with our coin flips and how much is Glimwood Tangle actually helping us. What I've learned right now is that starting Crobat is pretty bad. And is this one what they call a PGO hand? Question mark. Playing against Eternatus. Starting Crobat is bad, okay. really bad so the question is how much do I value getting a Porygon into play over a Sation? I can get an extra card that's the Porygon C even let's see if I draw a good card the capture energy that was not too bad so if I capture here get a Sation into play if I have it that's there we can quick ball for Porygon And then uh, we can hope to hit a rare candy. Let's try that. No luck, but another Porygon. Okay, okay. Opponent ain't so happy, maybe. Am I gonna get poisoned? Pretty damn sure, I guess. There's no reason why not give the 10 damage, right? Rapid fire poison. Let's see, do they have anything? Well, there's an Eternatus. That ain't too bad. The energy in play, hmm. And that was it. Yeah, now I start understanding why that was bad. The question is, am I going to Marnie that? No. Am I going to play another Porygon? Maybe. Let's get a Maractus into play. You know why I feel lucky? Because I'm not going to Marnie a hand where he's not going to do anything, or he wasn't doing anything. And look, it's a Porygon C. I'm going to throw away my entire hand again. I have former Actus, that should be enough to draw exactly all the prices I need. So am I going to get the energy I need to be able to attack? That's a good question. Well, there's only one way to figure that out. Ah, that's also my... Ah, that's, that goes my Erika, so... He's not doing anything. Am I playing a safe? Oh my god, guys, you might see me play this safe. How weird is that? Good news about playing it safe here, if he actually goes off and gets a huge bench, my Erika becomes good, because I can at least I drop, my, I drop my Aurora energies, I can get my Raxus down, and limit my hand a little bit. Because what is the hand limit here? Four or fewer. Let's see how lucky he was in his top deck. Not so much. So playing it safe here, so far it seemed to be okay. So let's crazy code. Throw away some stuff, well. This is actually just very bad when I think about it. This, you know, we're gonna let go of boss. Too bad. And we're also gonna let go of another ray candy. Too bad. Then we have to Maractus into play. I get two cards that way. Is that really worth it? Like like this, there's no harm done in just waiting it out. Then again, then why would I have attached these two Aurora energies? No, you're just going to sit here and see me play safe. Oh, the draw energy. Like this, I should be able to take some knockouts. This deck is 
well, I'm playing it slow, I can also just high risk it. Question is, did he draw anything this time? I think so. That's at least a crowbat. This, uh, this deck doesn't play the DNA. That would be dumb. But so far he only gets, well, one card out of it, two cards out of it, three cards out of it, mm -hmm. four. Okay, he did have some. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, it's not too bad for him then. That just means I'm gonna go for a very big cactus hit very soon. Fun times. Let's just call this Players' Cup to uh, how not to preparation. That's a good idea. No hit. Interesting. And there comes some Marnie. But it may make my decisions a lot easier. Let's see. Marnie, him back it is. One fifty, right? Yeah, yeah. That is a dread end. No, oh, we're just gonna go for it. No harm done. Let's play that one down. Get the stadium away. Let's see what we're gonna get on this one. Might as well take it. Evolution instance. Then time for a very good Marnie. Oh, this is going to be fun. That was a really good draw on that draw energy, wasn't it now? Time for the Dene. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I might as well play this because if he plays Marnie again, well, one less card for me to draw. Well, again, it's going to go on the bottom of the deck, but my deck is getting so low now. So <sighs> let's do it. Let's see how lucky we are. Oh. We don't need that. And you know what? That deserves... Oh. Wow. Um, okay, guys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I got that one on tape. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's see. Three prices down. Three to go. Oh, well. We can be pretty sure that Hooper Saltgate is going to come in and uh, take a knockout now, right? But uh, I don't care. This was totally worth it. <laughs> Let's see how many Maxes I should have. One more besides the three I'm seeing here. And that should be good enough, I think. I actually wouldn't mind a resystem if I draw, you know. That was not bad. That was not bad. Uh, except that I'm losing my stadium. But I just need to... Oh, I need what? Okay, maybe he has that. I don't want to see what he did right there. Okay. Interesting. 
Interesting. Just for clarification, I don't get blocked by this. No. So, um, this is gonna be crazy. Yeah, how lucky am I? We're gonna crazy code that thing. And then if I crazy code this, well, one for one, right? He already stamped me once. Is he really gonna stamp me again? Can you even get that into play? And there's no harm done in getting all my recycles down, right? Because they come right back at me. But I'm gonna save my twin energy. Because I need it. I'm done with that. Okay. Let's go take that knockout. Perfect, perfect, perfect. See, um, I didn't even need the stadium. Now I saw. Let's see. One thing I do need to realize, I see one, two, three in my grass there. Um, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Hmm. What am I gonna do actually? Oh shit. Let me wait a, wait a second. I don't have more grass energy in my deck. You know what? He's not gonna knock me out. <laughs> Let, let's try that, let's try that. No, he's actually what not. This is fun. Let's read everything. That gives me that back. The question is, is there another bars of solar in this cup pile? Stack view doesn't count in this case. No, no, we, I'm gonna, I have to play this safe. I unfortunately have to play this safe. As annoying as that is, I should play it safe. Yeah, we're gonna play it safe. See how lucky I am. I gotta tell you the reason here, only having five grass, I'm starting to realize why they play two grass energies. Maybe I should. Let's see if there's another boss there. That'll be a third boss though. What this is gonna turn out to otherwise is has to be one big, well, that's very sad. That's a lot of bosses order though. Hmm. That gives me 50 damage only. That's not enough. I'm missing a grass energy. Sad. I only draw one price like that. Let's crazy code something. One twenty leaves me between two twenty next turn. There's no way that is happening. No, I actually really missed something here. No. I'm actually sad because I can only draw one price with that one, and then I'm left without it. Ah. 
oh, now I'm actually really sad. Well, then it's much better that I get to concede because that doesn't matter. And welcome back. Then let's see what do we actually learn after watching me play a few games with this deck. Well, we learned the following. How does how much does Glimmer Tangle actually help you? And it's not the only thing that we can help it out with. So stay tuned for more cards where this uh, where this uh, stadium card can actually help you out achieving what you want. But for now, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and until next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. And yeah, now you got to see me fail terribly on PGGO, but you know what? That doesn't matter. It's all about having fun and well, flipping and being lucky and unlucky is the name of the game. So you know what, now you got to see that. But I nevertheless hope you liked today's episode and this new, um, this different practical approach where I add a practical segment to my theory. Um, let me know what you think. Don't forget to uh, like, comment this video with your suggestions or just what you think of it. And to subscribe to my channel to help me out and well, help me beat that YouTube algorithm. And uh, with that said, I wish you all a great day and until next time.